Bloating or stomach distension is super common. 18% of the people around the world get bloated at least once a week. When we eat, our food is broken down and the fiber is fermented. This produces a gas that expands your belly. If your belly gets expanded frequently, maybe more than once a week, don't worry, I got you covered. In this video, I'll go over five things you can do to make a significant difference with bloating. Also stay with me till the end as, as I'll share with you a bonus tip that I think is a game changer when it comes to bloating issues. So don't go anywhere. Also real quick guys, before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and turn the bell on next to it to stay up to date with new weekly videos. Bloating occurs in the abdominal area, this region right here, and it happens when large amounts of air or gas build up in the gastrointestinal tract. But how does air or gas end up there? Well, air gets in through swallowing it when we eat or drink. But how much air, you might ask? It's about two quarts of air a day just from eating and drinking, which is crazy. Most of that we can belch out, the rest of that, so about one quart of air will travel through the small intestine and out the back end through a process known as flatulence. Flatulence occurs anywhere from 14 to 18 times per day, releasing anywhere from 214 mLs of gas to 705 mLs of gas depending on how much fiber you're getting. So that's the air that causes bloating. What about the gas? Air that we breathe in and gas in our GI tract are two different pathways. Gas can be in many forms. As you can see in this diagram, we get O2 gas from swallowing, but you can also have H2, CO2, CH4, and N2. And some of these gases come from our own gut microbiome. We have 10 times more gut organisms than we do human cells, which is really interesting. This means just as much as we spend time on taking care of our cells and tissues in the body, we should spend the same amount of time taking care of these guys here. Since research shows us that they play a vital role in many different conditions in the body. So with that said, let's move on to ways we can manage the air and gases that cause us to become seriously bloated. The first thing you can do is to increase movement before and after a meal. Light exercises after eating, such as going for a walk, may help reduce bloating for some people. Now, we have a randomized control trial on that actually, which showed that physical activity could be effective in relieving abdominal bloating symptoms. The reason for that is because walking stimulates the stomach and intestines, which can help food move through the digestive system with more ease, especially for those with irritable bowel syndrome. Most people go straight to the couch or lie down after a meal instead of getting some light movement, such as walking for five or 10 minutes before and after a meal. This can make a huge difference. The second thing you can do is make sure not to eat a large amount of fiber all at once. Now, don't get me wrong, the fiber in plant foods is essential for regular bowel movements and preventing constipation, which may cause bloating. In the US, we are not getting nearly enough fiber in our foods, but once you increase your fiber intake, Start slowly. Let your body get used to the fiber in small amounts rather than loading up on fiber all at once. For example, you can add a few extra vegetables to your lunches or incorporate fiber-rich grains into your diet a few times a week initially, then work your way up. Otherwise, you can feel like an inflated balloon if you take the recommended daily amount all in one sitting. The third thing you can do is drink and eat slower. You see, Drinking or eating too quickly increases the amount of air you swallow. Some people actually swallow air as a nervous habit when they're not eating or drinking too, but it happens most commonly when you're talking while you're eating. To get around this, try becoming mindful of what you're consuming and try to get to 30 chews per bite. We all have digestive enzymes in our saliva and when you don't chew your food all the way, you don't let the enzymes in your saliva do its thing. So essentially you're skipping an important part of your digestive process, which leads to bloating. Another common mistake is chewing gum. What you're essentially doing is when you're chewing gum, you're telling your body you're ready to eat and the body releases acids and enzymes that help digest food. But sometimes this can cause bloating and high acid in your stomach. Not to forget to mention you introduce more air into your system when you chew gum. The fourth thing you can do is avoid carbonated drinks. Carbonated drinks contain carbon dioxide, which can cause buildup in your GI tract and cause bloating, especially if you're using a straw to drink them. When you place a straw in a drink, it captures some air, right? The air travels to your stomach upon the first sip. And if that first sip is something carbonated as well, 
It's a recipe for bloating. So try to stick with water without a straw. The fifth thing I want to spend a little bit more time on because I think it's quite important. And it's about the topic of FODMAPs, which stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. These are foods that our digestive enzymes can't break down. So what happens is our good microbiome will ferment them for us. And when they do, we get gas. And you can break FODMAPs into fructose, which is in almost everything here in the US, lactose, so ice cream is on here, fructans, vegetables like asparagus, broccoli, leek, and okra can cause excessive gas. Then it's your galactins like baked beans. And of course your polyols like apricots and cauliflower. These are all high on the FODMAP list and can cause bloating in people that are sensitive to them. They draw more fluid into the intestine and can cause your clothing to feel really tight. So you want to swap these foods with those that are low on the FODMAPs list, which look like these. Notice how on the list garlic and onions are on it. These two are also known to cause heartburn as well because of the fructans located in their bulbs. And onion powder is hidden in many different sauces and broths, so keep that in mind. The best way to go about figuring out if you have an intolerance to these foods is to keep a food journal with you. Write down the foods you eat as well as how they make you feel afterwards. Doing so will get you personalized answers to the foods that sit well with you. I left a food journal that I recommend down below in my description box if you are serious about taking notes on your foods. If you crave onion flavored foods, the green part of the scallions or chives can be a great way to go around the issue. There are also issues with bread as well. Two main ones being non-celiac gluten sensitivity and of course a wheat allergy. If you experience frequent bloating after eating gluten rich foods like these, take note of these and try swapping them out for these, with a favorite of mine being teff. I love teff, I think a lot of people should try it. Where this actually comes into play the most is when you have SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth which occurs when bacteria that usually grow in one part of your digestive tract, like your colon, are growing in your small intestine as well. If you suspect that that's the case, then I would get SIBO testing and our stool testing to find out what may be the underlying causes for your own unique digestive issue. And lastly, I want to end with a technique that is often underestimated and goes back to a stretch called the cat and cow position. After you enjoyed a meal, maybe you took a short five minute walk afterwards, find some space to give your body a nice stretch and get into this position here. Hold this pose for five deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth and continue repeating it. And make sure to let your belly expand fully with each breath. The idea is to help activate your body's parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for the rest and digest mode, mainly because of the vagus nerve. Another way to do that is through a bonus tip that I wanna leave you with since you made it this far into this video. And it's actually through humming. A pilot study that looked at humming found a regular daily humming routine can help enhance the parasympathetic nervous system and slow down sympathetic activation. What you could actually do is try humming after a meal or maybe on or after a walk to see if that helps with your digestion. And it doesn't matter what you hum, the idea is to activate these muscles and stimulate the ones at the back of the throat, which are the powerful muscles that you have. But I'm more curious to hear from you guys though. What are your thoughts on bloating as a whole? Do you feel that there are some more tips in here that you want to share as well? I want to make a separate video on the role of probiotics in bloating as well, but I want to hear from you guys. Comment down below what your thoughts are and I'll see you on the next one.